<laughs> My name is Tracy and this is Mick. Um, I've had Mick three and a half years. I was sitting in the bowling alley and Mick ran in, jumped in my lap, started licking me in. We've been together ever since. My name is Kimberly. My dog's name is Miracle. We've been together for 12 years. My name is Summer. This is my son, Dimani, and this is my son, Chewy. Having a pet is like having another child. It's super chaotic some days, and most of the days, it's a great ball of joy. I wouldn't give him back for nothing in the world. He makes our life complete. Mick saved my life, actually. Um, I've been homeless since I was 10 due to, you know, abuse in the family. We've been homeless on the streets or in a vehicle for 12 years now. I've done all I can over the years to get Miracle's medical attention. I've sacrificed myself because no one's cared before. Hope Clinic has been a resource that so many of us out here have needed and value and appreciate so much. I always knew that I wanted to do something in the human-animal bond area. When I finished veterinary school and my residency, I came to Los Angeles and was going to work at whatever clinic that they had that provided care for pets of the homeless. And there wasn't one here, and so then it took me many years to get up the courage to be able to start one. My name is Dave Brett. I'm an internal medicine specialist. Tina is my wife. I'm, I've known her since 1993. We actually worked together at the same hospital and certainly as she started to develop the idea about starting Hope, um, I was drafted. It's a, been a lot of work and it's a lot of time, but it's, it's been a, a very good experience. Since their immune system is growing, they're just more susceptible to getting um, getting parasites. So we like like to check it. We do rely all on donations from the public. The Veterinary Centers of America own this building, so there's a surgery room, there's induction tables that we can use. So it's all equipped. We do provide our own supplies, but we don't have to pay rent on the facility and the equipment we can use and we don't have to pay any sort of rent to use the equipment either. When we first started most of the volunteers were friends of mine or colleagues of mine that worked here and since then we've enlisted many staff um, technicians and veterinarians from around the veterinary community in LA. So we've had a huge outpouring of people helping. My name is Christine Pellick and I have been working with the Hope Clinic since March of this last year. I had been working in the veterinary industry years ago and it had been about 15 years since I had hands-on work with the animals and I realized that there was a huge need. Excellent. That was so easy. The great part about volunteering here is that we can love those animals, we can help those animals, but we're also helping those people who love their pets as well. I've been on the street with this dog. I won't eat to save for the medication for him. Or if it costs for a veterinary visit, then I go ahead and I, and I, and I don't put gas in the car. Come on, Chris. Miracle, are you a boy or a girl? Miracle's a boy. All I think is a girl. We're here about the bump on the neck. When he was six weeks old, he ran outside and got hit by a car. And when he got hit by the car, he lost three toes. One of the vets wanted to take his leg. And I said, you're not taking that leg. I fixed that foot. It took me a year of bandage changes twice a day. And he's fine. He can walk on. He can run on. He do everything on. He's fine. So that's why we call him Miracle. Now it's a miracle. He got to keep his foot. All right. Now they're going to call you about getting the surgery scheduled. Okay. Before this dog decides to leave this earth, he's going to have a home. I'm on a Section 8 list with an organization called PATH, and they seem to be serious about it and care enough. I think I actually might pull it off before the end of the year. Kimberly, this is some dog food for our miracle, so go ahead and take that. 
So here is a portion of all of the donated food because oftentimes the homeless people will feed their pets before they feed themselves. And so it's really important for us to be able to get these donations. We get them from a lot of different sources. Most of the dog food is all donated from the Murray family. We are here to help and love on the people at Hope and just be a part of what they're doing. We're so excited to um, to serve in honor of our daughter, Brielle Murray. Our daughter, Brielle Ruth Murray, passed away on the 18th of February this year. If you knew her just for a moment, she would have touched your life. She had a joy and a spirit that um, so beyond her years. Our daughter, Brielle, was diagnosed with a very rare form of cancer. She was admitted to Chalk Hospital. And uh, during her first 14 day stay there, one of the things that encouraged her so much and put a smile on her face, which very little few things did then, was uh, the visits from the therapy dogs. And so um, Brielle said when she got out of the hospital, she wanted to have a dog of her own and she would love to name it Faith. We found the perfect little Pekingese with big blue eyes that looked up at Brielle, walked under her leg, sat up and said, I choose you. <laughs> Her joy for life was contagious, and um, you know that's something that we just hope to pass on and carry in, in our lives. Eight months ago, we discovered the Hope Clinic. I just prayed, you know, Lord, um, show me some special things from Brielle that I haven't seen before. And I found a letter that she had written that said she wanted to have a neighborhood dog food drive to uh, collect food and be able to give to um, needy organizations for pets that, that needed to have food and supplies and things. So on her service day, um, I think we collected over 700 dog beds, I don't know how many thousands of pounds of dog food, treats, enough to fill two horse trailers. So ever since that time we've been involved in donating, we get con uh, constant donations that come in and every time we do we kind of collect them up and then come here and just love on the people and the animals. We drive out here and we just know, we look up and we go, Brella is smiling. And each time that we get the chance to talk to somebody, help them, hand them a bed that came because of Brella's passing, what really is gratifying is gonna be getting to help others in any way. And we all can, no matter our circumstances, small or big, we can help other people. Seems to be going pretty well. We've got a number of folks waiting outside, but not long lines, so it's uh, we're, we're keeping busy without without being uh, overwhelmed. Uh, everybody's in good spirits. The clients, the patients, and, and the staff. here to get her shots and all her checkups, make sure she's a healthy girl. The person that had her before me was getting high and they were pawning her off on different people, leaving her for four or five days at a time. I don't know what she is. She's just a cutie pie. Pretty much anything you would see in a regular practice we see here, it's just a little bit harder because we're trying to manage them on a month to month basis. So we kind of look at treatments and medications to go from one month to the next. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. And our regular clients and their pets, because they come in more frequently, they're more attuned to wellness and things like that. It, it's not uncommon that they bring their pets in here for a specific reason, and yet because we're doing lab work and other tests, you know, we find out that there's other health problems and they're actually very surprised. Pretty typical. My dog's eating, drinking, acting fine, yet you're telling me my you know my dog's dying. My name is Brian and my dog's name is Rocky. 
Rocky. This is Rocky. Yes, and Rocky is. Uh, How's it going? How you doing? Hi, how are you? Nice how are you? to meet you. Rocky's yeah. missing a leg. Boy, buddy. Yeah, I had the leg amputated. Um, Cancer in the leg. Okay, yeah. when was that? Uh, that was about three months ago. Okay, okay. But he's been eating, you know. Uh, I, I love this guy. I mean, he just, just, um, animals are very healing. They, they help you through a lot of things. They, I think they ward off the evil spirits. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think that dogs are, are great, uh, great to have. Okay. Hopefully it's just a tear in his leg and hopefully the cancer didn't spread. If the cancer spread, it's going to be bad news. Is it a break? Uh, well, it feels like he's got a swelling over his femur, um, right here, right above his knee. Um, yeah, we're going to take him across the street. Uh, that's when we have the x-rays. Oh, good. We took x-rays and he had the cancer had spread to his other leg and it spread to his lungs. So, you know, he called his sister, uh, talked to her for a while, I talked to his sister and then he finally decided it was time. Hope has one clinic day a month and one surgery day a month, and today is our surgery day for November. We usually try to schedule the clinic day and the surgery day like two weeks apart. Today we had five spays, five neuters, and five dentals scheduled. And so far we've had three of the dentals come in and three of the spays, none of the neuters, which is unfortunate. At Hope Veterinary Center, we require that all of the animals are spayed and neutered to continue care here. And it is raining outside today, so I don't know if that has any effect on people being able to get here either. So hopefully, if these folks don't show up today, they'll be able to come at the next surgery day that we have. So this is Fergie. We're gonna induce her so she can get spayed. And She's been here once before, got a blood test, everything. She's healthy and just getting her spayed, so we won't have to worry about her. Always the thing that is the hardest for me and that keeps me up at night is where is our next dollar going to come from to be able to continue what we're doing. All of us that work here have an, another job and so we're trying to do everything that we do for Hope kind of as a second job. Our goal is to be a freestanding facility. We want to be able to purchase our own hospital to be able to serve everybody during the week instead of just one day a month. Are we able to provide for it? Are we going to have enough medications? Do we have enough staff that's going to be able to donate all of their time and their weekend to come here and set that up? I think that's one of the really hard things to go is like month to month we want to be able to offer more and more continual services, but we're just trying to maintain right now what we've got. Oh, now you're going to lose the camera. <laughs> it's interesting because the time that we share here and the people that we talk to, 
Even though they're going through such tough times, so many of them are so happy. And they love their pets. It brings so much joy to them. There are people that will argue the fact that, what are you really doing here? Do you, should a homeless person really have a pet? Many of the homeless people don't have any other support system. So they don't have friends, relatives that they can go to uh, in times that are tough for them. And so that need for the companionship is so strong. He's been my best friend. He's kept me sane, he's kept me happy, kept me out of trouble, kept me responsible. Most homeless people in Los Angeles can find shelters but they're choosing to not go to those shelters, to not have a roof over their head or a hot meal tonight because they love their pets so much. And so they're choosing to be able to keep their pets and to keep that emotional connection and keep that love, which may be the only thing that they know that loves them. You and me.